Hey everybody, Nate here, back with another episode of Backstage with Nate. Today's video is all about college audition pre-screens. I'm going to give you my top five tips to make sure that your pre-screen submissions go as smoothly as possible. Stay tuned. You've been putting in all of this work, learning what it means to be a performer, and now you want to continue that education. Whether you're deciding between a degree in theater or a degree in musical theater, or you're deciding between a BA or a BFA, whatever it is, those applications are daunting. And the first part of that process is the pre-screen. A pre-screen is where you submit a video and they decide if you're going to be able to get an audition appointment later on in the year. The pre-screen process is complicated because every school has different requirements and you're just getting started in your college audition experience. So you wanna make sure that you have a plan. These five tips that I have for you are hopefully going to help you start forming that plan and make the process go as smoothly as possible. Tip number one is creating what I call your audition requirements spreadsheet. This is a great place to organize all your information so that you can see what exact pieces you need to prepare for your pre-screens. On the left-hand side of your paper, I would list all of the schools that you're going to be applying to. Up at the top, I would list all the different things that they could possibly require. A comedic monologue, a dramatic monologue, dividing these out between classic and contemporary pieces. The same thing with your songs, a classic uptempo, a classic ballad, a contemporary up-tempo, a contemporary ballad, an art song, uh, a dance tape, all of the different things that you could possibly need. Then go in and fill in the boxes. That way you can make sure that you aren't missing anything. Also, it's gonna allow you to see what tapes you can use for multiple schools, and that will save you time in your filming process. If you'd like to use the requirement sheet that I created that you're seeing on your screen, you can download that by clicking on the link in the description below. Once you've figured out exactly what your requirements are, this is where you want to start choosing your material. This brings me to tip number two. You want to make sure that the material you choose tells your story. It tells the story of who you are. A lot of times we hear this thing called the overdone list. The overdone list is an idea where songs are performed so often that they are overdone and that people sitting in auditions don't want to hear them. If you take the overdone list that have been created by every single audition coach in the country and combine them together, every single song in the musical theater canon will be on that list. To me, the overdone list is an important thing to consider, but it is only something to consider. It is not the be all end all in choosing your material. You see, at the end of the day, you want a song that tells your story, that's gonna showcase who you are. A song is only going to be overdone if you don't tell your story, if you tell it the way that everyone else is going to do it. If the piece that you're looking at tells your story, something that you really connect to, and is something that you feel you need to tell so that they understand who you are, then it's the right piece for you. Whether it's a song or a monologue, it doesn't matter. The piece that you perform for your audition should showcase who you are, not who the character is that performs that piece in the show, but who you are and the story that you tell and how you connect to that given piece of material. It's important to think of your college auditions less as an audition for a show, but really as a job interview of showing how you could fit into the community that is that particular college's program. The way that they're going to be able to see your personality to figure out who you are is by showing them material that showcases you. It isn't about choosing material that no one's ever heard of for the sake of being unique and different. Be unique and special because of what you bring to the table and your audition will be so successful that every school will be jumping at the chance to add you to their list. Tip number three, don't forget about your paperwork. This means not forgetting about your resume and your headshot. Your resume needs to be formatted to be an actor's resume. If you'd like more information about formatting an actor's resume, you can check out the episode that I did on resumes. Your resume needs to showcase 
who you are at this particular time. And you wanna make sure that it's formatted correctly because that's gonna show that you are ready to be at the collegiate level. It isn't about the credits that you've done, how many of them you have, or what all you've studied. It's that you show that you are ready to play at this level. The same thing goes with your headshot. It needs to show that you understand what an actual headshot is. It isn't a school photo. It's a photo of you on your best day. So if you have questions about what your headshot should look like, feel free to check out the headshot episode I did. But remember, they know that you're not a professional actor yet, so please don't go out and spend thousands and thousands of dollars on getting a perfect headshot. You just want a photo that really looks like you and showcases who you are as a person and as a performer and is gonna make them interested in wanting to get to know you more. Tip number four is for the day you film your pre-screen videos. You want to plan out this day. You want to make sure that every detail is coordinated and that you treat it just like you would the regular auditions. Make sure that you plan out what clothes you're going to wear, that they're washed and ironed and that they're looking their best. You don't want to be scrambling trying to figure out what you're going to wear for your video right before you go to film. If you're gonna be filming in a specific location, say in a rehearsal hall at your school or on stage in an auditorium somewhere, you wanna make sure that you pack everything you're going to need. If you're gonna be filming on your phone, make sure that you bring an extra charger. Make sure you charged your phone the night before so the battery doesn't die while you're filming. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that everything is properly lit. Make sure that there is enough light. If your video is too dark, they can't see you, they're not gonna watch it. Try to eliminate as many shadows as you can from your face and from the rest of your filming area. If you're going to be using some device to play pre-recorded music, I would strongly suggest asking a friend or a family member to be there while you record so that they can actually press play. That way you can stay focused in the moment and you're not thrown off by having to start your own music. You wanna make sure that you're properly framed in your video. You wanna make sure that if you are filming on your phone that you have something that's going to allow you to get it up to a decent level so that you can be completely in the shot and be completely seen while you're recording. You wanna make sure that you plan out all of these things so that you are prepared the day of your shoots, so you're not scrambling around, and that you can just focus on performing and have an amazing filming session. Finally, tip number five, reach out and contact a college audition coach. A college audition coach is different than your voice teacher or your choir teacher at school. A college audition coach is familiar not only with the actual performance components of your submission, but the more business side of everything as well, making sure that every logistical component is there and working exactly the way you want it so that you can showcase not only your amazing performing abilities, but who you are as a performer and as a student because as you're auditioning for college, you're auditioning to show that you would make an amazing potential student for them in their program. So you wanna make sure that an audition coach, specifically a college audition coach, is looking out for you every step of the way and shaping your performances to showcase the story that you've worked so hard to create for your pre-screen videos and of course, for your future in-person auditions down the road. You wanna make sure that you find an audition coach that you connect with and gets to know you so that they can shape your performance specifically to you rather than just to the hundreds of other students that they are consulting with. If you'd like more information about scheduling a session with me, you can find out more information about that on my website. The link is included in the description below. So. What other questions do you have about the audition pre-screen process? I'd love to hear what they are and I'd love to see if I can help you. Post them in the comment section below. That's it for this episode. I hope you found the information useful. If you liked the video, please give it the thumbs up. The more thumbs in the air, the more episodes will be coming your way. If you haven't yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, go click that big red button so that you get notified whenever I post a new video. If you haven't yet followed my studio on social media, you can find all the links for that in the description below. If you'd like to schedule a coaching session with me, or maybe you're a fellow teacher interested in a masterclass, you can find out more information about scheduling those on my website. Again, the link is included in the description below. Thanks so much for checking out this video, and I hope the information gets you even closer to finding your stage door. See you soon.